Hello, in this video, I will be discussing Paul Freire, the founder of critical pedagogy. His ideas about the role of education and political freedom eventually became the most significant contributions to what's now known as critical pedagogy theory. However, to fully understand the context in which he developed his theory, we have to understand where he came from and how he lived within the history of Brazil the largest country in both South America and Latin America. Brazil was a Portuguese colony from 1500 to 1822. Even after its independence, Brazil was the last country in the Western Hemisphere to abolish slavery in 1888, well into the 20th century. 85% of the population was illiterate, and some Brazilians indentured themselves or family members into the still existing illegal slave trade to prevent destitution and starvation. Freire was born to a middle class family during the economic depression of the 1930s. When Paulo was 10, the family had to move to a smaller and cheaper city in the outskirts of Recife, although not in one of the existing favelas but in close proximity. It was nearly a decade before their fortunes changed. However, Paulo has said that during this part of his life, he was desperately hungry, which made learning nearly impossible, not because of ability, but because he was too distracted by the hunger. It was also during this time that Paulo began stealing food to feed his family. He eventually had to drop out of elementary school after his father died of a heart condition. This situation exasperated his already precarious situation in life. In 1934, Freire's mother begged the principal of the local secondary school to allow her son to attend. Paulo was passionate about using his education to help others. The principal agreed and even reduced his tuition. Freire eventually studied philosophy, but while completing his law degree, he began his career in 1942, teaching at the same secondary school he had graduated from. In 1947, Freire became the director of the Department of Education and Culture and began conducting literacy programs for poor adults. It was during this time that he developed his major themes about the relationship between oppression, literacy, and educational practice. Freire harshly criticized what he terms the banking model of education, which sees students as passive, empty accounts to be filled by the wise, all-knowing teachers. It transforms students into receiving objects and attempts to control thinking and action, leading men and women to adjust the world, inhibiting their creative power. Frere linked the bank model of education to the socioeconomic and political relationship between the oppressor and oppressed, which he experienced firsthand during his years of poverty and hunger, near a favela in Recife. Building off Rousseau, Hegel, Marx, and others, Frere ontology, a branch of metaphysics, states the ultimate goal of all persons is to increase their humanity. The colonial education model emphasizes the need to provide the indigenous populations with an education that is new, modern, and better, rather than traditional, old, and wrong, thus an extension of the colonizing culture. According to Frere, the bank and colonial education model dehumanizes both the student and the teacher and entrenches the behaviors of the oppressed and the oppressor. Rather than the traditional hierarchical models of the relationship between teacher and student, where the teacher is firmly above the student, Frere proposed in his most famous work, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, published in 1967, that effective education is built upon democratic relationships between equals who are open to learning from one another. Specifically, education should allow the student to regain their sense of humanity and empower them to overcome social, economical, and political shackles. Simultaneously, teachers must be made aware of the constraints that surround education and that the way students are taught and what they are taught serves a political agenda which serves the oppressor. Teachers themselves have political notions they bring into the classroom, and to break the cycle of oppression, they must play an active role. According to Frere, the teacher-student relationship is what allows conscientisation, the critical awareness that precedes action, to develop and oppress peoples over time. Conscientisation begins with students becoming aware of that contradiction in their social, political, economic, gender, race, and class conditions, and then take action to resolve those contradictions. 
In Frere's so-called problem-posing education, A, teachers problematize each issue discussed in class, B, students then pose their own solutions, and C, teacher and student work together to implement change. By working together in both goal and process, teacher and students successfully change the conditions of oppression and ultimately achieve the democratic ideal of freedom and equality for all. Dialogue is the basis for all problem-posing pedagogy and requires solidarity, a sense of equal footing, and mutual respect. Frere wrote in his later books that education is fundamentally an act of love. He considers social hierarchy, race, religion, and sex to be interlaced into the conventional education system, through which this culture of silence eliminates the paths of thought that lead to a language of critique. According to Frere, unequal social relations create a culture of silence that instills a negative, passive, and suppressed self-image onto the oppressed. The learners must recognize that this culture of silence is intentionally created to oppress. This culture of silence can also cause the dominated individuals to lose the means by which to critically respond to the culture that is forced on them. Among the many educators, philosophers, and activists influenced by Paul Ferreira and his theories are bell hooks Henry Giraud, Cornel West, and Jonathan Kuzel. Paulo Freire is among many educators who were mutually influenced and was influenced by liberation theology occurring in Latin America during his lifetime. This movement found itself in Catholicism in the 1960s after the Second Vatican Council, where it gained momentum from theologians such as Gustavo Guterres, Leonardo Boff, Father Juan Luis Segundo, and Father John Subrino. It was here where prefer preferential option for the poor was first stated and written. This expression was used first by Father General Pedro Erjupe in 1968, and soon after the World Synod of Catholic Bishops in 1971 chose it as its theme for justice in the world. Pedagogy of the Press has been translated into 17 languages, and its emancipatory teaching model has been adopted or adapted in many previously colonized countries on every continent. The Paul Freire Institute is currently active in 18 countries. However, pedagogy of the press has been banned in many, many more, even in the state of Arkansas, USA. It is important to recognize not only Paulo Freire's contribution to education, but also his influence and insistence of human freedom and love of the other, a cornerstone of Catholic leadership. With that in mind, I would like to read you a quote from Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Não é no silêncio que os homens se fazem, mas na palavra, no trabalho, na ação, reflexão. It isn't in silence where men are made, but in words, in work, in action, and reflection.